buses may economically and effectively handle up to 5,000 feet an hour along their routes, as long as they don't get caught in traffic jams. Rail systems handle far more people along exclusive rights of way, but they become economically practical only when handling many more than 20,000 people an hour during peak loading. In between rail transit and buses, there's a problem area where 8,000 people, 10,000, or 15,000 want to go along a particular route during rush hour. Neither a bus system nor a rail system can handle that load economically. For such a requirement, the transportation industry needs a new idea. Westinghouse has advanced such a new idea. You might say that it's part bus because it looks a little like a bus and even runs on rubber tires. It's also a little like rail transit because it operates on a slim private right-of-way, an expressway. And the idea goes even further, breaking new ground in the field of rapid transit. The cars are light, about one-third the weight and size of a rail car. And they're controlled by an entirely automatic computer system controlled so precisely that they can be run safely at short intervals around the clock. Single cars during the early hours and multi-car trains at the height of the rush hour and it's all an interesting new concept. The reason why the roadway can be slim and lightweight is that the cars which will ride it are lightweight. The idea behind the cars is simple. The underframe is made of steel superstructure and skin of aluminum. This means lightweight and relatively small, so they can be operated individually in the early hours of the morning and operate at very low cost. Each car is designed to seat 28 people comfortably, with room for 42 standees if necessary. For maximum convenience, the seats are arranged along the side to make boarding and leaving easier and faster. They must be safe and smooth and comfortable so that people will enjoy riding them. Enjoy it enough to leave their automobiles at the station. They will be air conditioned and on cool but moist days, they will be dehumidified. The car is guided by wheels riding the guide beam. But just as important, steel discs above the guide wheels safely lock the car to the roadway. The guide wheels steer the car axles so that the car can follow short radius curves of 150 feet or less. The axles, for example, are motor type containing differentials. Power is developed at each axle by a 60 horsepower motor, which is coupled to the differential by a short drive shaft. Every wheel is a driving wheel to attain the greatest amount of shape. The suspension is drags, helical springs, and shock absorbers. The cars and trains on the Transit Expressway are robots, performing very acts which are not controlled from the wayside. This is just unusual aspect of design, a major departure from past thinking in the transit field. The heart of the system is a motor commuter, crammed in the dirt, all of perfect, safe, and economical operation of the system. Usually referred to as part of wayside control, the computer continuously monitors the train's position and velocity and is able to compare what the train should be doing to what it actually is doing, and then sends corrective commands. The train's position is indicated visually on a display, which is part of the operator's console. And nearby is a typewriter, which prints out information, fully describing the performance of the system. The operator will speak with people riding the cars through a two-way voice communication system. The precision and reliability of computer control has made it feasible to run trains 24 hours a day on minimum headways. The precision of the computer system has been well demonstrated. The cars, for example, usually stop at a station within plus or minus six inches. The purpose of the South Park demonstration project has not been to perfect the hardware of the system, but to demonstrate the feasibility of the concept. This feasibility has been amply demonstrated. The roadway, for example, has performed very well. 
there has been no foundation subsidence whatsoever after 15,000 vehicle trips. And both structural sway and beam deflection have been within the norms calculated. In addition, mass transit experts who have viewed the system have agreed that it is a remarkable aesthetic and technical achievement. The design won a first place in the 1966 American Institute of Steel Construction Bridge Competition. The ride qualities of the combined car and roadway system are considered very good. And the engineers have learned ways to improve roadway construction, which will make the ride even better. It's expected that operating systems will offer their customers a ride equal to that of a fine automobile on a modern highway. Many months of testing under all weather conditions have also shown that the Transit Expressway is an all-weather system. Traction of the rubber tires was excellent. Braking was equally impressive. A two-car train moving 40 miles per hour on packed snow was brought to a stop in 360 feet under full control. This type of performance was consistent. Acceleration can be accomplished on normal grades without resistance heat snow melting. This performance led system engineers to decide that no track heating is needed except at stations for stopping. Every conceivable type of emergency, including failure of the trains, the roadway, the communication system, and the computer was simulated. In every case, with no exceptions, the system performed with absolute safety. The sound level of the system was found to be no higher than the park which surrounds it. Only tire noises and the click of the electrical current collectors can be heard, and these are subdued. At many times during the latter stages of testing, the people of Pittsburgh and surrounding communities were invited to take rides on the Transit Expressway and to give their opinions. This was considered an important part of the test program, since no idea in rapid transit, new or old, can hope to succeed unless people like it. Once again, the verdict was a strong, positive reply. People definitely liked the Transit Expressway. Today, the Transit Expressway is being tested for a new purpose, the detailed refinement of its many subsystems. The goal now is improvement in performance, aesthetics, ride, and more economy. It is being readied for full-fledged operation in locations across the nation. The Transit Expressway, a new idea in rapid transit, one designed for routes which need more than bus service, but less than rail service. Its purpose is to supply fast, comfortable, safe, convenient, and economical transportation. On all these counts, its feasibility has been fully demonstrated. <laughs>